So the preseason games are in the books, and everybody thinks Mr. Trubisky is going to be the week one quarterback. Today we're going to break down his film and his play to see and try to answer the question, did he do enough? Did he win that job? Please hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to ring that notification bell. We do a weekly live and a daily segment every Monday through Friday. I also have special guests from time to time. Tomorrow from the Hindsight uh, podcast, we have Nathan Heinz. Don't want to miss it. Please hit that like and subscribe. With that being said, guys, I'm Daniel J. This is State of the Steelers, and welcome to the huddle. So we're breaking a little film today, taking a little deep dive into Mitchell Trubisky and try to answer the question, did he do enough to win that starting QB um, position? If you guys are listening to me on Anchor or or Apple Podcasts, you can watch this on YouTube. I highly recommend you to go out that direction. If you're watching this on YouTube uh, and you want to find me on a uh, audio only style podcast or or whatnot, you can find me on Anchor Podcast and anywhere else. In reality, where you get your podcast, whether it be Apple or Google or or Amazon Music, uh, just search up "State of the Steelers" and you'll you'll find us. Now on this um, show for today, you may want to tune in and watch. We'll be breaking down some film. Let's go over a few bad plays, a couple good plays. Now, when I broke down these plays and I separated them and I put them together, um, the ba- the good plays. <laughs> There were some good plays that ended up not being so great. We'll break it down. We'll look at them and we'll we'll go through them individually. Let's get into it. So on the first couple of plays that we're going to look at are going to be the uh, back-to-back sacks in the first quarter. Uh, The offensive line has been suspect up to this point. However, I don't think that these two sacks are entirely on the offensive line. Let's look at it. The first play you're going to see, and I'll be as descriptive as I possibly can for those on the audio side only. You have Mitch Trubisky under center, um, Najee Harris lined up behind him. George Pickens is going in motion across the um, across the the, uh, the field here. Dante Johnson's going to be lined up at the receiver up at the top. Gunnar Olszewski is the slot receiver. As always, guys, the uh, the film is slowed down so we can, you know, take a real good look at what's going on. So this is a play action pass and a bootleg for Mitchell Trubisky. Now, you know, as he turns around after he um, fakes the ball to Najee Harris and looks down the field, there's really nothing open. Uh, once he gets outside of the pocket, he really needs to throw this ball away. There's nowhere else for him to go. Uh, instead of, you know, living to play another play, he attempts to, I don't know, run for a first down, which was about seven yards away, uh, and then even get to the uh, line of scrimmage, ended up with a two-yard loss. And so, as you can see, right here, the ball should be gone out of his hands and somewhere over the, into the sideline. In my opinion, it's just, you know, when he's under pressure, there seems to be uh, a little bit less, the decision-making becomes a little bit questionable in my opinion. All right, this is the very next play. And in this play, you're going to see a, Aiden Hutchinson's lined up against James Daniels. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky's lined up in a shotgun with Nanji Harris to his right. George Pickens is a standalone receiver at the bottom of the screen. Up top in the slot, you have Gunnar Olszewski and Deontay Johnson out wide. Now, Aiden Hutchinson's lined up against uh, uh, James Daniels, who is playing the right guard. And Daniels does a good job of taking Aiden Hutchinson and, and basically – grouping all of the uh, interior defensive linemen uh, together, uh, you know, stuffing them up. Now, they do get brushed back, all three of these guys, Mason Cole. You actually see uh, Dodson on the ground. Mason Cole, James Daniels, and, and and Dodson ends up on the ground. They do get pushed back. However, Mitch Trubisky just kind of stands in the pocket a little bit too long, in my opinion, and, and takes an unnecessary sack. He should be able to roll out and, and again, maybe throw the ball away or, or, you know, try to find somebody 
you know, coming to open somewhere else. Uh, let's watch the play. So right here, and this is the other thing that I, I wanted to kind to kind of I've noticed out of um, Mitchell Trubisky when I was doing or putting these clips together. Uh, it seems like he gets a little bit confused when there's any disguise of what the defense is doing. Now, this is a preseason game, so for the most part, um, it's going to be vanilla. However, when the Detroit Lions did disguise their defense, it, it, did, it definitely did um, confuse Mitch Trubisky. And so in this play, they're basically playing man with a cover two on top of it. And it's just taken up. There's nothing for him to do at this point. He needs to uh, roll out of the pocket and either throw the ball away or or give somebody an opportunity to break free on a uh, backyard Ben Roethlisberger style play. And he doesn't. He just pump fakes and takes a sack. Not what the Pittsburgh Steelers needed in that moment. Definitely. <laughs> And so, you know, those plays right there, in my opinion, are, are concerning. They're, they're, they show that he has a uh, – his, his pocket presence might not be as polished as it appeared watching the game live, so to speak. So, on this next play, what we're going to watch is we're going to just kind of see – like I was mentioning before, whenever the Detroit Lions <clears throat> did anything as far as disguise uh, uh, their coverage, so to speak, it really did work against Mitch Trubisky, confused them. Uh, in this play here, this is a third down and long, and so you know I understand that you know you don't you're not expected to usually convert like third and. Third and twelves or third and elevens, unless you're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. But um, you know, most of the time, if you're you know you got third and long and or something like this, it's usually a, not going to be converted. However, in this situation, the, the Steelers called the you know, man Canada called the right play. Uh, Mr. Trubisky just didn't read the defense correctly. You know, you know, at first glance, you have a single high safety over the top. You have a uh, what looks like press coverage down at the bottom on, on the receiver, uh, Sims. Um, at the top, you have um, some cushion given to George Pickens, which, you know, can be given to, to him due to his speed on a man-to-man -man coverage um, type of situation. You have Gunnar Olszewski, you have a uh, slot cornerback um, on top of him as well. So, you know, pre-snap, it does look like it is a man-to-man -man single, you know, a sing, single high safety. But as you notice, as soon as the ball is snapped, uh, the safety here bails out to reveal that they're playing actually a zone, uh, cover two soft zone um, defense. And you're going to see Sims right here open up. You know, the thing is, it looks like Mitch Trubisky's looking at him. <laughs> He's looking in this direction. I don't understand why he doesn't let go of the ball. Sims comes open in in the hole in the zone. He should, he's gonna pass the 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 sticks. This is a potential first down if if Mitch makes the throw. Uh, as you can see, he's wide open. Instead, he takes the check down to Najee Harris for a minimal game and and then a punt. We'll watch that one more time. So as you can see, you see the safety bail out to the top to reveal that they're playing in a zone, confuses Mitch, has a wide open Sims in the uh, in the soft coverage hole of that zone. You know, I saw that a couple of times, you know, um, going through the tape and watching this, and it was just kind of concerning, you know, and I think it got to Mitch Trubisky because in the not in the next play, but on the next drive, um, you'll see a similar lineup by the defense uh, and the Detroit Lions where they appear to be in man and they really are. And Mitch second guesses himself instead of finding a wide open guy, he uh, throws it into the only double covered player 
and nearly has an interception. Let's let me show you. So this comes after the uh, turnover on downs inside the uh, Detroit Lions end of the field. <laughs> uh, this, I believe, was third down. Now, this play was negated by a penalty, and even if it would have gone the correct way, it would have been negated by a penalty. But we want to look, and what's concerning about this is the fact that Mitch doesn't, you know, he locks in on Pat Fryermuth who's playing the tight end and doesn't, isn't reading the uh, the field. Now, if you look at this pre-snap, um, you see on the outside, you have both receivers. The cornerbacks uh, opposite of them are playing uh, press coverage. You know, you have Sims in the slot and he has a slot cornerback lined up in front of him. You know, you should, you should think that this is going to be a man coverage uh, play um, unless you see something happen, you know, like we saw in the previous play. Uh, you should automatically assume in the beginning of this is a man. And so <clears throat> right here, you can see Mitch Trubisky. He's looking at Pat Firemuth. Pat is going to do, um, he's doing a, like a, uh, was it like about a 10 yard up and then out. Down here where you have the man coverage, you have Sims going in, in, in and then out move. Uh, because of the cushion that he has and his speed, he's going to be open for potential first down here. Um, you know, given the cushion that was given, looking at the coverage, that should have been the first read, in my opinion. But Mitch looks at the uh, tight end over the middle, Pat Fryer move, and just he's double teamed. Uh, there's really no place for the ball to go. In my opinion, it's a, it's a poor decision. Uh, and it shouldn't have been made. It, he should have seen that he had the guy over and on the side, given the cushion, and read the defense properly. Uh, but like I said, no one's perfect. I'm sure many quarterbacks have been confused and seen ghosts, so to speak. But I think that's what was starting to happen here. I think he did get his uh, feet underneath of him and, and started to to play better uh, as the uh, the game went along. However, there was still a lot of concerns, even on the drive that ended up being the uh, the touchdown drive. And we'll get into that here in a few minutes. But on the next play, and this is the uh, the last that I had put together that was supposed to be of the negative plays. However, uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to go through the good plays. Put that in air quotes because there's going to be a few bad ones. Now, in this next play here, this is going to be a um, – like a – Again, that we mentioned before, you have a single safety over the top, a lot of press coverage. This is going to be a man. He makes, in my opinion, the right choice, the right read. He looks off the safety, makes him go to the left, and then throws the ball to George Pickens. However, the placement of the ball is just, it's a question mark. You know, the accuracy isn't there. This isn't in, in the red zone. This is where the field is shrunken. This is where accuracy play takes it's valued at the highest point. You I mean, you can't, you know, your, what's the word I'm looking for? Your margin of error is significantly smaller in the red zone. And this is where you need an accurate anticipatory quarterback. Let's look at what we got here. So you have single safety over the top. He drifts over to the left. He's watching Mitch. Right here, this ball needs to be here where watch no he throws it behind and the cornerback garden uh george pickens uh, has a break on the ball and, and breaks it up you know at first glance i thought maybe perhaps he was throwing it at that place to protect george pickens however you know after watching it you know if he places that ball in front of him and low he's going to protect him and i believe that's going to be a touchdown all the way you know it's just those little things that um, are starting to add up. And, you know, this game where, you know, the Steelers had a turnover or um, both by on downs and by an interception and gave the offense a short field and, you know, ended up with just like 19 po uh, points, you know, three field goals and a touchdown. And the touchdown drive was <laughs> the entire length of the football field. And so, 
you know, it was very reminiscent uh, of 2019 Pittsburgh Steelers. I think back to the uh, Mason Rudolph's debut as a starter against uh, the San Francisco 49ers where the defense handed them field goals. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, field position that should have been touchdowns and all the all Mason Rudolph and the Pittsburgh Steelers could do at that moment was field goals. And so <clears throat> very reminiscent of that. It's just one of those things where I, I'm i concerned, guys. I really am when it comes to this. And, no, like, like I said, I was watching the game. You know, you all can go back and watch it. I was streaming the game with Mark Davison of Steelers Nation Australia and Pittsburgh Steelers Syndicate. And, you know, we talked about it there and we said, you know, that last drive that he had may have won him, you know, the uh, the starting position. But I don't know if he did win it. I don't think he's going to have it for long. Now, let's look at some of the positive plays that he had. Now, the best play that he had, of course, um, was the deep ball to Deontay Johnson. And so <clears throat> as you can see here, the the, uh, the Steelers have lined up in a shotgun. Deontay Johnson is at the uh, top. Uh, I believe that is George Pickens playing in the slot. Gunnar Olszewski playing at the bottom as the uh, as the solo receiver in the bottom of the screen. It's a single high safety. Appears to be man coverage. Mr. Bisky reads this, sees the uh, cornerbacks back to the, the quarterback, throws the ball and throws an absolute dime. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is the accuracy and position of the ball where you want. We'll see it from a different angle so you can actually see where it, it how it dropped. It was an amazing play. Mitch had time, saw everything lined up. You see, when, when everything lines up for Mitch Trubisky, it, it works out very well. You know, he, he saw what he saw, and um, his eyes didn't deceive him in this play, and he was able to make the uh, an accurate throw and a read down the field. Uh, I think he did a, a fantastic job on that play. Um, but let's go to the next one. So on the next play here <clears throat> that we're going to be looking at, Mitch Trubisky is going to be um, rolling out. This is going to be a design rollout. It's designed to shrink the field. Uh, I believe this was a, uh, a third down um, and like five or six to go and ends up being a first down. And at first glance, and I could be getting nitpicky, but at first glance, this looks like a positive play, but there could have been a better one behind it. And let's watch. So you have uh, Mitch Trubisky under center. You have in uh, in motion is uh, Connor Hayward. Najee Harris is lined up as the uh, running back uh, in the backfield. Cam goes, uh, Connor goes in motion. Mitch runs out, finds the open man, and hits Boygan for a first down. Now, what we didn't see <clears throat> so, as you can see, as soon as the ball is snapped, Mitch's eyes are in one area. He's not reading. Now, I know this is also going behind him, but you have uh, Zach Gentry coming wide open over the middle. Said his first read was there. Miles Boykin could be very, very nitpicky on my part. I understand it, but you know, it's just something that I saw, and I was like, you know what? Um, it just, you know, I thought maybe you guys, you guys, let me know what you think about this play. Am I being nitpicky? This is a different angle. So as soon as he hikes the ball, his eyes are on Miles Boykin. Continue, waits for him to do his cut and for the um, cornerback to surpass him. Like I said before, yeah, Gentry coming open, been open for a minute in the uh, in the hole of the defense. Perhaps if he reads the defense correctly pre-snap, he might look this direction earlier or at all. Just a... Uh, you know, just something that I, I noticed when I was going through um, some of the better plays that I put on there for him. So <clears throat> what we're going to be going, you know, through next is going to be 
the uh, some of the better plays on the uh, on the drive that in, resulted in the uh, touchdown, the only touchdown of the day. And so let's uh, let's get into it. So on this play here, you can see where where Mitch finds the right guy, but you know, good design. You know, he's just really locking in his eyes on the on Sims. So it was a good good play call by by Mike by Matt Canada. Um, you know, created the uh, the opening in the zone, and he got the ball to the right spot and to the right player on this play. Um, good job. Let's go to the next play. Oh, I don't want to get copyright hit, so let me pull this out first, and we'll talk about the next, you know, play or two, and then we'll go forward from there. And so, on this play here again, you know, I understand the read is is where it's at, but if you Keep your eye on on Boykin down here at the bottom of the of the uh, the play here. He's going to come wide open also. And again, this play is probably designed somewhere to come out here. The concept is probably out here. You know, uh, yeah. Let me take this part out. So on this play here, so on the next play here, we're going to be looking at, uh, this is another one of the <laughs> concerns that I had. It ended up also being a holding penalty uh, on the uh, right tackle there on Cheeks Core 4. Uh, however, I think Mitch Trubisky just isn't reading the defense correctly. He's not seeing the man coming open right in front of him and um, and cost the team a uh, a – a penalty here. Let's, because I think if he throws the ball on time, there's no need for the the hold. Uh, I think his, his he kind of ran into it. You'll see. So on this play here, you have um, <clears throat> yeah Pickens at the bottom, Ben Olszewski, um lined up next to him in the pairs. At the top, you have Miles Boykin, who is the guy that keep your eye on him. He's the one that's going to be coming open. So as the ball is snapped. As you can see, this is a man uh, coverage. And let's rewind it. So Boykin beats his man right away and is coming over the over the middle right here. <clears throat> Mitch just dumps it off. He, he needs to throw the ball right here. Over the middle, this would end up in a first down. Uh, there wouldn't be a hold happening after this portion of the play, which, as you can see, it happens because he kind of runs around there and, and runs in, makes it a very difficult block for uh, Chicks Core for and that he puts him in a very awkward position, causing the penalty, and and <sighs> it's just not needed in that situation, in my opinion. Um. Again, you know, it's one of those things where if he reads the play correctly, he sees that they're playing man. It's he's just locking into one receiver. It's not there. Where's my dump off guy? He sees the dump off guy. You know what I'm saying? It's one receiver, no progression. One receiver, not there. The dump off. Dump off is Najee. Eyes go there. Main receiver here looks like it was going to be um, Pat Pat Fryermuth who he was looking at, didn't see what he wanted, looks for Najee. Najee's covered at that part, at that point, runs around, still attempts to throw the ball to Najee. So it's not like he never he never changed or left his decision from coming off of Najee, even, even once he saw that he was covered. 
you know, those are things that are concerning to me. Uh, I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't. Uh, and I think that, you know, I haven't broken down uh, the, the, the plays of Kenny Pickett yet. You know, there's one that everybody's talking about, which is the uh, Miles Boykin uh, back shoulder pass, which I'm really intrigued about going back and looking at because in real time, it looked weird. It looked funny. You know, I, in fact, if you go back and watch um, the live stream, when the pass happens, I'm like, ooh, because I thought that was a, uh, a underthrown ball. And then, and then that ooh went to ooh. <laughs> when, <laughs> when it looked like, you know what? It could have been a back shoulder pass. I don't know yet. I want to go back and look at it, see it from a different angle, see it from up top. And in fact, I'll probably be doing that uh, on Wednesday. So that'll be airing out on Thursday. So you, you go check that out. Now, not everything, like I said, Mr. Trubisky did was bad. And this play here, he reads the man coverage. He looks at George Pickens, sees him, and does a awesome, awesome back shoulder pass. But again, like I said, what you'll notice is it's one of those things where the first read is, is it works out for him. There's no pressure, nobody in his face, nobody anywhere. And he's able to do the job, you know, accurately, uh, accordingly. Now, once he gets the pressure in his face and once he gets, um, you know, the read, that first read isn't there, it's, it looks like there's some concern there. Definite concern. Now, this play here is the one to Pat Firemuth that in real time I thought was a really good play. And I still do think it's a good play. Uh, I just don't know if he meant it to be also a back shoulder pass and or if he did, if that was the best choice. And again, this is Monday morning quarterbacking. Um, you know, it's different in life <laughs> on the field. And I'm also showing you guys in three quarters speed. So it's not like, um, what do you call it? Uh, he's the guys that he's playing against are running at three quarter speed, but let's get into it. So on this play here, you have Sims in the bottom. He's the sole receiver at the top. You have George Pickens, um, lined up in the inside. You have Gunnar Ocheski and, and Pat Fryermuth. uh, two Mitch's left is, is Najee Harris, who who does a good job blocking in. You know, and then from this angle, too, that looks like an awesome pass. That looks great. That looks good. Uh, I might be just being nitpicky. I thought that perhaps if Mitch kind of dropped it over the middle here, this could have gone a little bit better, maybe an easier pass to catch. Uh, when you don't see, and we'll look at it from a different angle, is the uh, this is a linebacker who has his back completely to the quarterback, and from this angle you can't see it, but but Pat Firemuth has this guy beat, and so he has to turn around, and the only reason he catches him is because of that turnaround. And you'll see it from this angle here. You know, and this is the difference, in my opinion, between Kenny Pickett and Mr. Trubisky is. Uh, in the similar situation, Kenny Pickett threw the ball to a, to Pat Firemuth where he could do something with the ball. And as you can see, this linebacker is out of position. If this ball just kind of drops over this way, yeah, it could be a, a, a better deal for him. Not not bad position, not bad throw, not, you know, I, I got to say this is probably a little bit nitpicky in lifetime. I thought this was an excellent throw. I still do think it's a pretty good throw. It's, you know, it's in the zone. It's in the spot where it needs to be at. Um, and it was for completion. Uh, good job. I just think that perhaps, you know, that ball, that, that ball comes out this direction. Over, you know, leads if he leads Pat Fryermuth a little bit over the, a little bit over the top there. You know, the safeties were, were pretty far apart. Um, you know, he leads him out this way, and the reason why the the linebacker ends up in front of him right here is because of the position of where Mitch is throwing the ball. 
you, you see where it's at. He's got a, it's, like I said, I feel that the ball should be over here and it's way behind him. Could be a, a back shoulder pass. It could be uh, something different. So this is the uh, touchdown pass here. Uh, again, good play, good pass, good design. Mitch is looking at uh, at Sims. This is supposed to be, in my opinion, some kind of like pick play. But you have Tyler Sneed here uh, in the slot, and he's he's just not a uh, as an experienced of a receiver as a as a Claypool or a uh, Gunnar Olszewski who will be playing in that position probably throughout the. Um, Regular season, nothing against Tyler Snead, but he goes a little bit too tall. Regardless, it's a man, so um, because of that, you know, Sims beats his corner and is able to to get in. Good play, good touchdown pass, good spot right here. So Mitch Trubisky's right there on that play. There, in my opinion, was was a good one. He um, the placement of the ball, uh, it was accurate. It was a decisive throw. Good job on that last play. Like I said, there's some things in that last drive that are a little bit nitpicky. Um, however, when you have Kenny Pickett, who kind of was put in a similar situation last week and with pressure in his face, was able to place a ball, in my opinion, a little bit better. And I don't know. I don't know if this match is as is clear and, um, as, you know, as clear as people are thinking as far as who the winner or who is this QB one I still think Mitch is probably going to get it just because of the amount of time that he played and that he got the only time with the ones this past you know exhibition game and this was the tune-up game but if this is the type of play that we're seeing uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Mitch Trubisky is going to be the starting no, I'm sorry I wouldn't be surprised if Kenny Pickett's the starting quarterback uh, and come around week four against the Jets. That's my prediction. Um, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about Mr. Trubisky? Are you as confident as you guys were before looking at the tape? Uh, am I being nitpicky? Let me know in the comment section. If I'm being too, you know, uh, too hype on Kenny Pickett and, and I may be, you know, nitpicking Mr. Trubisky because of it, let me know. Tell me in the comment section. Uh, with that being said, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. I'm Daniel J. This is State of the Steelers. Peace.